bring <laughs> free very good Ari I have a fun and exciting video for everyone. Today we are going to be teaching our dogs how to retrieve a drink from the fridge. The very first thing we want to do is break this exercise down into the smallest steps possible and then we're going to put it together for the final product. We're going to be using what's known as back chaining. This is where we start at the very last step and we work our way forward until we have that picture of our dog retrieving the beer from the fridge as well as opening the fridge or soda, whatever you prefer. The very first step what I like to do is to get the dog to bite the item. Now I'm going to be using a PVC pipe that is roughly the shape of a can. So it's similar to a can but I first want to teach her to retrieve using this and then once we have that picture we transfer it over to the final object which is going to be a can. So what I want to do is I want to present it to her. If she bites at it right away we're going to use our marker and then we're going to follow it up with a reward. Since we're not using a command we don't have to worry about which marker we use. You can use your continuation marker. For me that's yes it just means a treat or you can use your terminal marker which means treat plus release. Again, we can use either one for the first step since we are not adding the command yet. And if your dog doesn't go for it naturally, then you can move it around to try to kick in that prey drive. The very first time they place their mouth on the item, mark and follow it up with the reward. It should look something like this. Free! Good. So you see I'm using the terminal marker. I also put it behind my back so when I bring it out free, the dog's going to reach for it and grab it. Like I said, your dog's probably not going to go for it at first. And if you are struggling, you can start off with something you know your dog wants to bite, like a toy or a bully stick, something that is going to kick in that prey drive, toy drive, play drive, or food drive, whatever you need to do to get your dog to do the behavior. You can always transfer it over to a different item later. So again, we bring it out free, mark and reward. That's going to be the first step. The second step, we're going to basically be doing the same thing, but now we're going to move it in a way that's going to make our dog work for it. They're going to have to reach and grab whether I'm going to aim high to the right, to the left side, down low. I want her to put in effort to get the item. Once she grabs it, again, we're going to mark and reward. It should look like this. Free. Very good, Ari. Free. Excellent. Free. Very nice. Free. Notice I'm not doing any commands right now. I want it free. I want her to know that she grabs the item, we mark the behavior, free, and then we reward. So that's going to be the second step. Now, the third step, we want our dogs to learn how to hold the item nice and calm. So what I'm gonna do for her sit, is I'm gonna place it in her mouth. The moment the dog takes it in their mouth, we're gonna have one hand underneath their chin and the other one on top of their head and I'm gonna pet her and reward her for holding it. Now we're gonna start asking for duration. So on this one, you don't wanna mark until after your dog holds it for at least a second and then we're going to make the dog hold it for longer and longer. As the dog is successful, we can ask for more time. So I'm gonna bring it out. She's gonna hold it. Good girl. First, I'm gonna pet her. See, she dropped it. Now, if they go to drop it, don't, panic or worry. Oh no, the dog dropped it. Calmly pick it up, place it back in the dog's mouth. So good girl. Very nice. Free. So very first time I'm only asking for a second or two. Have her hold it again. Good girl. Free. Mark and reward. Again, we want to get them comfortable holding the item. Very nice. Very good. Lots of praise, lots of petting. Free. And then we can mark and follow it up with the reward. Just like every exercise, we start with continual reinforcement. We're rewarding every single correct repetition. Sit. Very nice. Good. Yay, yeah, good girl. Very good. Free. Once you have your dog holding it while you're petting them, you're going to start to remove your hand. You want them to be able to hold it in their mouth without you having to pet them the whole time. So we're going to ask for her to hold it and we're going to bring our hands away and you're going to see that I'm going to mark it pretty early in the beginning, but just like we were doing prior to that, we'll ask for more duration as our dog is successful. So I'm going to get her to hold it. Go ahead, Ari. You can do it. You know what I want. Come on. Good girl. We're going to pet and then we're going to let go. Free. Mark and reward. And I still keep my hands pretty close while I'm doing this exercise. I'm gonna ask her to hold it again. Good girl. I'm gonna release, very good. Free. Nice work. So now we're getting a little bit of that duration. Sit. Good girl, go ahead. You know what I want, all right. Come on, baby girl. Very good, very good. Free. 
Excellent. Now you want to make sure, now I'm progressing through these steps pretty quickly. When you're doing this, you're going to have to take some time on each step, but you're going to take some time broken down into multiple training sessions. A training session should be very, very short and you want to make it fun. You want to make it enjoyable. So when I first started doing this with her, the very first step, I would only do that I would take a few days to work that step and I would make sure the sessions are short. And you're gonna do that with each step, nice and short sessions, again, to make it as fun as possible. The fourth step, we're going to ask our dog to walk with the item in their mouth. This can be very difficult for some dogs. If you need to, you can continue to assist them the way you were doing it on the step prior by keeping one hand underneath their chin and your additional hand on top, petting their head, making sure the item stays in their mouth. If they drop it just like the uh, step prior, no big deal, pick it up, place it back in their mouth and go right back into the exercise. I'm going to ask her to take it, then I'm going to ask her to come to me. So I'm gonna do what's known as the backwards fall follow exercise. As she walks in front of me, when I stop moving, she should sit and then I will take the item from her. It should look something like this. I'm also going to demonstrate how it would look if I need to continue to pet and assist the dog through the process. Good girl, come. So I can pet, good girl, very nice. And if they drop it, we just pick it up, good, good girl. And we start walking, come on baby. Very nice, very, very good, free. So we can do it like that or I'm gonna have her taken. I'm gonna walk back around this way so you can see how she looks when we're doing the backwards follow exercise. Good girl. Oh, get it, baby. Come on. Good, so now I'm walking backwards. I'm not worried about perfect precision. She made a couple mistakes. It's no big deal. Once we stop, free, because that's how I'm gonna want her to bring it to me. I'm gonna want her to bring the item to me and wait till I take it from her and stay nice and calm. So go ahead and take it, Ari, and let's go. Very good, and I'm not using any commands. I'm using what I like to call free informal commands. So meaning I'm asking the dog to do it by using a casual conversation in a sense, like go ahead and take the item. I'm not telling her command like bring free. That's very formal. Often when I'm first starting out, I'm using informal. So another example of an informal command would be like, come on, let's go. They know to follow along, but we don't have to be strict with the rules. If they make a mistake with an informal command, it's not a big deal. So it's something I recommend using in the early stages. So again, we ask them to take it. Go ahead, Ari. And then we just walk backwards and have our dog walk with the item in their mouth, just like that. Free. Nice job, Ari. Once you get your dog to walk with the item in their mouth without dropping it, then you can move on to the next step where we're simply going to ask our dog to perform basic obedience commands with the item still in their mouth. Now, if your dog drops it just like before, place it back in their mouth and go right back into the exercise. Make sure it's short and simple if you find yourself running into issues. That could be because you're making it too difficult too fast. So again, if you realize you've progressed too quickly, there's nothing wrong with going back a step in the training. So it should look something like this. We're gonna ask our dog to take the item. Very nice, come here, Ari. And then we're gonna ask for command. Sit, down, center. Very good, climb. All right, heel. Free. So you want your dog to be able to perform multiple commands, go climb, with the item in their mouth. That's going to get them used to moving around, holding on to it, and waiting until you give them the release command or you ask them to give it to you before they let go of it, which is going to be important when we're asking our dog to go grab a can from the fridge. You don't want them to run over and just drop it. You want them to wait until you take it nicely. So this is going to help with that quite a bit. For step six, we're going to start asking our dog to pick the item off the ground, but we are going to maintain contact with it at first. So I'm gonna move the item to the ground. When she goes and grabs it, I'm gonna allow her to take it. My hand is still going to be holding the item during this process. But eventually, as your dog starts to progress and become better, you wanna to start to move your hand farther away from the item. In the beginning, we wanna make it look as similar as possible to the previous steps within the training. So it should look something like this. I'm getting my treats ready too. Good girl. Free. Nice. Very good. Free. Good girl. Free. Climb. Break. Good. Free. So now this time I'm going to place it down instead of making it a race. Climb. She's excited to grab it. And that's what we want. We want our dogs to have fun with this. And I'm gonna keep my hand on it, but I want it to be 
you could have it be completely vertical, but I like to start with a slight angle. So it teaches the dog to start to turn their head when we have the can sitting upright. All right, go ahead, Ari. Good girl. Free. And that was another one of those informal commands like we talked about earlier. All right, climb. Bring. Free. Very good. And now I'm gonna start bringing my hand away from it. Bring. Good girl. Free. Climb. Till eventually you can get your dog to retrieve it while you're standing back. Bring. Very good. Free. Climb. That's good. Quiet down, young lady. That's going to be step six. Now for step seven, we can start to throw the item and we'll allow our dog to go retrieve it while it's still moving. That's going to become an easier process within the training because the item is still moving. While the item's moving, we're using some of that prey drive as well as some of that play drive to get our dog to retrieve the item. Now we were able to get our dog to retrieve it while it was stationary, but this is going to help them get it while they're farther away from us and bringing it to us. So it should look something like this. Free. Very nice, Ari. For step eight, we're gonna go through the first seven steps once again, but this time we're going to add the command. For this, you wanna say the command before you present the physical cue. So the way we add the command is we're gonna say the command, then we're going to present the item and you go through each step. So I use the command bring. So I'm gonna say bring <coughs> free, then I present the item. Bring free, bring free. It's not always gonna be perfect. <laughs> Bring, <laughs> free, very good. And remember now we wanna start changing positions a little bit more, all right, climb. Bring, free, bring, free. Bring, free, bring, free. Very good. Bring, good girl, come here. Very good, very good. And so you see, down, heel. I'm just going through each step. Down, down, climb, come, free. That we went through prior to this without the command, but now we're adding the command. Climb, bring, free, bring, free. Bring, free. Now we can start tossing it, climb, bring, free, bring, free. For the next step, we are going to start placing the item close to where the dog is going to be retrieving it from. We want it to be at an elevated position, very similar to how it's going to be in the fridge. So I'm gonna be using this chair right now. And what I wanna do is I wanna put my dog into the heel position. All right, heel. <coughs> Sit. I'm going to place the item on the chair and I'm gonna ask her to bring it to me and we're nice and close to the item. Bring. Free. Good. We're gonna start asking for a little bit more control now. She barks when she gets excited. Down. Down. Thank you. And each time we're gonna build more distance. Bring. Very good. Out. Thank you, Ari. All right, heel. Yes. Down. Down, bring, out, bring. I want them to bring it to me with the can sideways, so I'm not going to accept it if she brings it the wrong way, which she did right there. So I just adjusted it, and now I'm going to take it out, free, and I'm gonna reward her. If you notice, there's some times where I take the item from her and I say free, and there are times where I take the item and I tell her, go ahead and grab it, Ari, bring, and I tell her, out, 
then I say free. The reason why I'm doing that is because when I say free and I'm grabbing it and still in her mouth, I'm marking the behavior of her holding it. I'm telling her, great job, you're holding the item, that's what I want. You can now release it and I'm gonna pay you for it. Then there's times where I'm asking her to release it through a command and I'm rewarding her for releasing it after I ask her to. One, I'm rewarding her for holding it and the other one, I'm rewarding her for releasing it. So that's why I'm doing it those ways because I wanna reward both options. So she understands that, great job, you're holding it, that's what I want, but also great job, you released it when I asked you to. Heel. All right, heel. Yes. Down. Down. Sit. Bring. Free. Very good, Ari. Climb. So now we're almost at the last position where she's going to be where I want her to retrieve it. So now I'm gonna come back over here, set it back down. I'm gonna stand next to her on this one and I'm going to tell her to bring. Very good, and you see she fixed it that time on her own. Free, nice job Ari, very good. Climb. And for this last one, I'm going to be sitting down. If I need to, I can give the command and then stand up and help her. And that's something you might have to do. So we'll see if she responds off just to the command. If not, I'm gonna stand up and give her a little bit of assistance. Bring, so she's doing it, so that made it easy. Good, fix it, very nice. Free, excellent. If I asked her to do it and she didn't get up right away, all right, climb. I'm gonna use just a random word to show you what I would have done. So uh, let's say get it, for example. So I would have gone, get it. And then I would have pointed. And of course the item would have been there and then she would have brought it over. So if you need to get up free to help your dog, go ahead and do that. We wanna make sure they're successful, climb. Now we're gonna to progress to the next step. So we want our dog to be able to grab the item out of the fridge. So I'm gonna move the chair. And now I'm going to start opening the fridge. When you first start, you want the fridge completely empty. Right now I have a bunch of items in it, but we want it to be open. And we wanna set it right in the center where we want our dog to grab it. First time I do it, I stand right next to the fridge to show her. Ari, bring, I keep my hand by it so she knows which one. Free, down, all right, down. And I should have gave her the treat once I said free, so I made a mistake right there. She was waiting for her reward. Also, when you first start this, you may not be able to keep it straight up and down. Even though we went through the steps where we had our dog pick it up when it was vertical, you still may have to hold it on a slight angle to show your dog that they need to turn their head to get it. Go ahead and bring Ari. Good girl. Free. Nice job. Ari, heel. Down. Down. And now I can keep my hand close to it, but now I'm not touching it. Bring. Very good. Free. And we're just going to continue to build distance. Ari, right, heel. Down. And we want to get to the point where we have it in the fridge. All right, go climb. And we ask our dog to bring it all the way from the position where they're going to be. And again, if you need to, you can get up and help your dog. Bring. Very good. Free. All right, free. No, don't keep chewing it. Out. So I told her to out since she thought that she wanted to continue to play with it and she was using the terminal marker free as, okay, I wanna play with this toy, so reward me with this toy. Go climb, all right, good. Now that we have our dog grabbing it out of the fridge, the next step is teaching our dog how to open the fridge. This is much easier than you might think and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. Now we wanna teach our dogs how to open the fridge. I like to use a rag. You can use any sort of toy rag cloth that your dog can grab in order to pull to open the fridge. Now, first we have to teach our dogs to pull. Playing tug of war is a very easy way to do this. Now, Ari loves to play tug, so I just had to let her know that this was another toy that she can pull. The only downside to this is when your dog knows they can pull it when it's attached to the fridge, 
is they might think the game of pulling it against the fridge is what they're supposed to do. So when I first started teaching this to Ari, she actually pulled the fridge a little bit. She opened the door and she continued to pull because she's like, I'm pulling, I'm having fun, this is the game. So I had to let her know, no, it's not pulling to, to pull, but rather pull to open the fridge. And once she understood that, it became much easier. And the way that I did that, once she pulled and opened the door, then I told her break, which is her release word, but she also realized, okay, he's telling me to release this item. I could have said out as well, which is a great option, and then direct her into the fridge to grab the item. And we present it, free, they pull. Good girl, good, 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 yes. Excellent, so I marked the behavior of her pulling and I gave her the reward, free. So I'm just using the terminal marker, very good. She pulls, free, yes. And I'm gonna use the other mark because she's now looking at yes as getting the treat and free as grabbing the toy. Good girl when she pulls, yes, yes. Nice, good job Ari, free. Good, get it, good girl, yes. And so I'm waiting for her to pull. Now that I have her pulling each time I present the tug, now I wanna place it on the fridge. But when I first do this, I'm gonna hold it next to the fridge and I'm gonna ask her to get it. Go ahead, free. She pulls, good girl, nice job. Out, are right, you yep. No, out, good girl. So again, we wanna take the item and we wanna hold it next to the fridge. Free, they bite and pull. Good girl, very good. Now you can, out, are right, you yep. You can allow them to pull and you can just continue playing tug or you can release it like I did. So you can also tell them free, free, good. And she pulls and now we're gonna play tug for a minute. Very good. Ari, out, free, good girl. Ari, out, free, nice, good job, yes. Good, and we're gonna reward her. All right, go climb. Now we're going to attach it to the fridge. The way that I do that is I use zip ties and I'm gonna show you how I do that as well. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the rag and I'm gonna roll it up. Then in the very center is where I'm going to put the first zip tie. Cut off the extra end. And now I'm gonna take the next zip tie and that's the one that I'm gonna use to attach it to the door. Now we have the rag on the door and our dog's going to be able to use this to open the fridge. Once my dog opens the fridge, I'm gonna use the terminal marker and I'm gonna reward her with a toy. So I want her to know it's the act of opening the fridge. And when we first do this, I hold the rag because I wanna make the picture as close to the same one that we were doing earlier to make it easier for our dog. Free, free, free. See, she, she gets excited and pulls the fridge. Now, free, good. She's a Malinois, so they have a little bit more drive. Free, one of the, free. And if your dog goes to open it like that, mark and reward. Free. Good girl. Very good. And she wants to grab one of the items because we've practiced this already. All right, go ahead. Free. Good girl. And I don't have to put this on a command because this, free. In order to get the can free out of the fridge, they just have to know how to open it. Free. And again, when I say free, that's letting her know you did the behavior correctly and I'm going to reward you. Free. Good job. So you see how she's free? She's continuing to open it. That's excellent. Now we can go to the final step, which is getting them to take the item out of the fridge, but also opening it. All right, go climb. All right, go climb. Climb. Now I'm going to take the item and I'm going to place it in the fridge. I'm letting my dog watch. Also, when you first do this, make sure there's no other items in the fridge where the dog's gonna be grabbing it. You wanna make it as easy as possible for them. So when she opens the fridge, I'm going to help her if needed to get the item because they'll start to understand open the fridge, but now opening the fridge is a game and we want them to know that that's just one of the additional steps that they need to take in order to get the item that we want them to retrieve. And so I'm gonna tell her, bring. <laughs> She should come here, open, break, good, show her the item, and now I'm gonna walk back, getting her to bring it to me, free, marking and rewarding. Once you have your dog <laughs> go climb, doing that, 
We want to continue to build distance just like we did in the step prior to that. Once your dog is successfully grabbing the PVC pipe out of the fridge, then you can start to progress to the can. So let's see how she does if I come over here and I tell her, bring. Good, good, Ari. Nice job, very good. Free, very good. And it's not always gonna be perfect, that's fine. All right, climb. Your dog will get better the more they understand. So she's a very high drive dog. And as I said, some of the things that I had to struggle with was her wanting to play tug with the fridge. So I had to teach her not to do that. And then the next struggle was teaching her how to hold the can nice and soft. Malinois are not known for having a soft bite. In order to get her to carry the can softly, I went through roughly 30 cans of sparkling water before she was able to hold it without puncturing it. Now she knows she needs to grab it. She needs to be very light with her bite in order to ensure that she doesn't puncture the can. You're gonna have to adjust depending on the dog that you're working with, and that's going to be the art of dog training. But if you follow this step-by-step -step process, you will be able to find success within your training and have a dog that can retrieve any item out of the fridge that you would like. So you're gonna go through each step that we just went through with the canned items. So now you have your dog retrieving the soda or the turkey brew, whatever it is you want your dog to retrieve from the fridge. I hope you liked today's episode. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Of course, as always, please hit that like button, subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.